Welcome to Beginner Music Theory. This is lesson three. And lesson three is gonna be covering measures and time signature. So let's go to musictheory.net and click on the third lesson, measures and time signature. So this lesson is pretty simple. A lot of you guys already know uh, time signatures and measures, uh, but it's always good to review especially so that we can get some of these terms. So as you know, when we have staff, we can break up the staff into uh, measures, which are called, or bars. And what we do to do that is uh, we draw vertical bar lines across the staff. So they look like this. So now we have this staff and we've added one bar line. And now we've made two measures or two bars and uh, this is a time division of the staff meaning that we're dividing the node values or the time that it takes to go through the music so uh, in order to figure out how much time or how many node values we can put in each bar we need to talk about time signatures, and this is one that we talk about a lot in class. Uh, so time signatures are going to tell us the amount and type of notes that each bar or each measure can have. Uh, so let's talk about uh, the most common, possibly, or like one of the most common time signatures, which is gonna be four, four. And let's also talk about three, four. Uh, since they're like pretty similar. Uh, so when we have a time signature, time signatures are divided into two numbers, one on the top or one on the bottom. And uh, they're gonna tell us different things. The top number is gonna tell us how many of a certain node value we can fit. And the number in the bottom is gonna tell us what node value these are going to be. So for example, the first measure is 4-4 four, four, and it's going to have four quarter notes. So the four at the bottom tells us that they're going to be quarter notes and the four at the top is going to tell us that it's going to be four of them. So four quarter notes. And if we follow the same logic, we can see that here we have three, four. So if we start with the number in the bottom this time, we know that each beat is going to be a quarter note and the number on top being a three, that's how many beats we're gonna have in the bar. So three quarter notes. So very important here. So the time signature tells us how many beats on what kind of node value the beat's gonna be. Uh, important to know is that you can't put more or less than the exact amount into a bar. So for example, we can't have three quarter notes only in a four four bar and then draw a bar line. That's not allowed. You need to put exactly the right amount. Also, you can't have, say, five quarter notes in a four four bar or four quarter notes in a three four bar because that's going over the amount that we're allowed. So this is a very, very strict rule. You can't have more or less. Now, you can fill up the space with um, silences or rests if you want. So for example, in a three four bar, you could have two quarter notes and then write a uh, quarter note rest to make that third one, the third beat. Um, but we'll get into uh, rests in another lesson. Let's talk now about time signatures that don't use the quarter note as the value of the beat. So these are two fairly common um, time signatures in which the quarter note does not get the value of each beat. Uh, so if we follow the same logic, let's look at the bottom number. This is eight. Now, if four was for quarter, 
number eight is going to be for eighth notes. And the number of the top, it's going to be six beats. So each beat is an eighth note and we have six beats. So six eighth notes. Um, to, to be more specific here, that doesn't necessarily mean that there are six beats in this bar, actually. It, it, in reality, six eight has two beats, uh, which would be one and uh, two and, uh, but the way we, we can figure out how much we can put in each bar in a six eight is that we take six eight notes. So the number on the top isn't necessarily the number of beats in a bar. Sometimes we can like, you know, organize that a little bit differently. So just be careful. It often is the case that the number at the top is the number of beats, but not always the case. So just be mindful of that. So we have six eighths, six eighth notes, and three two, if we do the same process, that number two is gonna stand for a uh, half note. Four was quarter note, so two is half note. And the number on top is three, but that's going to mean that there are gonna be three half notes in this measure, okay? So now, of course, we can kind of mix and match values to add up to the total. So for example, in three, two, we could have, for example, two half notes and then to make up the third half note, we could have two quarter notes after that. So two half notes and then two quarter notes that would make up three half notes total. So the values inside can, you know, be sm shorter or bigger than a half note, but we have to make sure that the total never goes above or below three half notes, okay? And that's the rule for any t time signature. We can mix and match values, but like the total always has to add up to the amount uh, of the time signature. So this chart right here will kind of give us a, a overview of what we discussed so far. So remember time signatures are a number on top and a number of the bottom. The number of the bottom tells us the note value and the number at the top tells us how many. So in the case of four, four, we have four quarter notes. And in the case of three, four, we're gonna have three quarter notes. And six, eight, we're gonna have six eighth notes. And finally, three, two, is we're gonna have three half notes. So this is a pretty simple idea. Um, obviously, uh, measures and time signatures can get tricky once you start combining a lot of different node values into it. So you just have to always sit down and like carefully count to make sure, especially if you're writing music, uh, the count to make sure that you're adding up to the total. But the basic concept, as you can see, is very, very easy. You can look at um, different combinations in like your sheet music and your, uh, your music binders and try to figure it out on your own what different time signatures might mean with this rule. Okay, we will see you guys in another video. Take care.